already uh, we are live I think um, I'm gonna wait a few minutes and I'm gonna make a quick post to let everyone know that the stream has started and yeah usually it takes a few minutes till everyone notices so we'll just be waiting for a few more minutes And I can already see some of you here in the chat, so let's see. Little Mango says hello, how are you? Hello! Um, <laughs> I'm actually sick, so you will hear that in my voice. But apart from that, um, I'm okay and I'm really happy to be able to do a live stream again. Because it's been a while. Uh, Sashak, hello, hello! Uh, Boha, Ohio Sakai, no idea what that uh, at the time where you are actually uh, well right now I'm in Hungary and here the time is um, 9.36 p.m. so it's it's night time uh, Brian Duran hi hello Marianne Marianne hi Sunny hello it's nice to have you guys here and uh, I'm gonna wait a few more minutes so people who are interested in the stream can join us and then I will start driving. <coughs> uh, Savage Beerus, I hope you feel better. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's it's nothing too serious. It's just... <laughs> yeah, it's just bad timing because today is literally like the only time I was able to do this live stream. And yesterday I was starting to feel sick, and yeah, I, I actually have a fever, and my throat is kind of killing me, but you know, it's nothing too bad. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's. I survived. I had medicines earlier, so I should be able to find to do this fine. I can't English, <laughs> so you just you just need to bear with me. Um. You can come in. Hi, hello there. Um, Anahi Avalos. Hey, Senpai. Quick question. Are you going to release the storyboards page template for us? Really want to use it for my manga. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I know. I swear. After the stream, I'm gonna release them. Um, I actually already put it together, so I just need to upload it to my Gumroad. Um, um, I'm gonna post uh, a link in the YouTube community. Uh, page afterwards, so you will be able to get it from my Gumroad store. Um, this time for real, and I'm, I'm also will be making a video on, on storyboarding, so that will be part of it as well. But since I've been promising this for such a long time now, that I'm just gonna gonna upload it, and and the YouTube family can get it. So, <laughs> so so yes, I I, I will. <laughs> uh, has <Nathanus> waves. <laughs> Hello, uh, I will be back, but you can't see me right now because I, I don't have my camera going on, which is probably for the best because, yeah, six and is not a nice side, so uh, next time maybe <laughs> I will show my face. Marianne, Marianne, go to sleep. <laughs> it's too early for that, and I, I got work to do. Like, you know, um, I, I really wanted to do the stream, but at the same time, I kind of need to draw, so. <laughs> Uh, I got I got stuff to take care of, so it's like I can afford to go to sleep just yet because yeah I, I don't have that much time to just do it all around and just go to sleep and 
be sick, so <laughs> ain't I got a bad time for that. Alrighty, so um, what you see on the screen right now is actually an illustration I did for issue 109 of Saturday AM. Um, yeah, actually, I never introduced myself. So, if you don't know me, my name is Andrea Otilia Doni, and I'm the creator of the manga series Saigami, published and serialized in Saturday AM. And this artwork is from issue 109, the latest issue of Saturday AM, uh, which is already available for our subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber or you don't know Saturday AM, it's a bi weekly, currently bi weekly. No, we're, we're monthly. So, it's <laughs> sometimes it's a bi weekly, sometimes it's a monthly uh, shonen manga anthology. Aka the worst, most diverse manga anthology. We also do have a sister magazine called Saturday PM, which is a more mature, more refined content uh, kind of magazine, which is bi monthly. And um, yeah, you can find all of the links for Saturday PM and all of my other stuff in the video description or in my profile. And right now, I'm gonna be working on illustration. Oh, well, it's just gonna be a character artwork. Uh, anyway, uh, for Saigami, uh, for the Saturday morning page. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quickly look at uh, the comments and then I'm gonna start sketching. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my throat is... <laughs> You're gonna hear a lot of unpleasant noises during this stream and I'm sorry about that, but bear with me. Uh, and I have a lot for your next video idea. If you need you a tutorial on Clip Studio Paint, I have one, but I'm confused about the various tools. Uh, actually, that's a good idea because I know Clip Studio can be kind of confusing at first, and there are a lot of features that I only discovered like later, way, way later on that are just like godsend and, and they are so useful. And I actually did teach a bunch of stuff to my interns during the internship. Uh, we had this at 3 a.m., and I know even. Uh, them. Some of them were already experienced users of uh, Clip Studio, but there were a bunch of features that they never used, and, and it was super useful to them. So, so yeah, that that's actually a really good idea, and that will be pretty easy to do. Um, Link Slicer, hello Sunny, good to see you again. Thank you. It's really nice to be back, and it's so awesome to see the familiar faces and names. So welcome, Epic Cake. Hi, Zayf Illustrations. Sup? Speaking of interns, <laughs> Zayf in the house. Uh, if you don't know, Zayf Illustrations uh, is one of my interns at Saturday AM, and he actually already made his debut in issue 108, I think? <laughs> Seven? Six? I can't remember, I'm so sorry. But he already made his debut in Saturday AM, and he did a really, really great job. So look out for this young man because he's on a roll. <laughs> And I just can't remember numbers <laughs> anymore or anything. So, um, just gonna go over here. I already have a blank canvas here. And what I will be drawing will be just a simple illustration of uh, Ayumi. Um, this illustration will be for the Saturday M homepage. We are, we are making some new design stuff. Um, and, uh, yep, it, it will be just a simple uh, pose of Ayumi just standing, looking forward, looking at, at, at the viewer, the reader. Uh, I probably will have her like hold a flame in her hand or something, so it's not just, you know, a very static pose, but at the same time, this doesn't need to be anything too flashy. Um, I actually don't have anything too concrete in my mind, so I'm just gonna improvise here. I'm not even sure which outfit I want to use, so... I guess I can leave that up to you. So, which outfit of Ayumi do you like most? Uh, her just usual clothes, that's, you know, just a hoodie and the short and stuff like that? Or do you prefer this kind of fantasy ish, sort of Celtic like a setup? Or gear? Yeah, I really can't talk <laughs> today. So, let me know which one you're interested in, and I'm gonna draw that. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, in the meantime I can still start my sketch because, yeah, <laughs> I need to start drawing. Uh, switching to a pencil tool, and uh, let's check 
comments. Uh, Maria Marianne, is radiations from Chernobyl? That's like, I think Chernobyl. Uh, that's what that sounds, or maybe it's me and go to sleep. Yeah, I'm not too sure about this comment, I'm sorry. I haven't seen the series just yet. I know a bunch of stuff about Chernobyl because, you know, it's like the neighbor country. Um, so, so yeah. Um, Anahia Valos, do you need a degree in order to become a manga artist, especially working at Saturday AM? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you don't need a degree in art, that's for sure, and it depends on what kind of position you want to work for Saturday AM. Um, because, you know, Saturday AM is a company that requires a lot of people in different positions. So everyone wants to be comic creators, but the truth is that we have a bunch of positions uh, that are just as crucial, if not even more crucial, to the company than the comic artists. And uh, for some of those, it is good to have a degree. Uh, for example, if you want to work um, in sales or marketing, that's very good to have an education in that. Uh, even if you don't have a degree, you know, if you have a few years of experience or, or, or some sort of education in that, that can be hugely helpful. Um, as for the artists, uh, we don't require a degree in art. Uh, I don't have a degree in art. Uh, I, I have a degree in journalism, so it has nothing to do with comics, uh, to be honest. So so there's that. Um, the same goes for other positions. Um, what we require is mostly the experience and the skills and not necessarily the papers, especially since we work with people from all around the globe. So we know that different countries have different requirements, different education. But, you know, if, if you have the skills and what it takes to, to get a position, then that, that's what matters. <clears throat> uh, epic cake. Ooh, I'm intrigued. I'm not sure about that for, but um, I'm, I'm excited, so... <laughs> uh, little Mango, speaking of storyboarding, since you mentioned does that determine the pacing of a comic? I'm still working on Lose Out Time, but I got story down in Lose Out Time. I do script before storyboarding. Uh, yeah, um, because once you do the storyboarding, you will actually see like a certain scene might be pretty short in in a in a script format or a story outline. But once you do the actual storyboard. You know, you will have a lot of moments where it's just a silent panel or, you know, just, just a moment. Like, you, you just let the camera wander around and stuff like that. So that can highly change the pacing that you might not necessarily have in your script. Of course, it also depends on how detailed your script is. Like, some artists like to write scripts that are, like, novel-level detailed. And some artists just use a few outlines that this will happen on this page and that will happen on that page. Um, for me, the wall pacing is up to the wall storyboarding process. Like, A, I, I don't really write scripts. I, I do my storyboards in a completely different way, so I, I, I never write scripts. Um, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, when, when I write that first draft instead of a script, I don't know the pacing in that moment. Sometimes I mark things that here I want the pacing to slow down, I want to have something that, that slows things, or here I want this to be a very fast-paced or very shocking moment. Uh, but most of the times it comes down to the storyboarding, when you decide um, how you're gonna pace. Of course, oh my god, my chair is creaking so much, I hope you can't hear that, but yeah, I'm moving around a lot. Um, of course, you know, if you have a uh, limited number of pages, um, then you have to be careful because you need to adjust your pacing uh, to that. But yeah, most is up to style and sense. So so yeah, you you can play around a lot with the pacing in the storyboard space. <clears throat> Uh, more comics. Uh, I, I will come back to the stream in a minute, guys. Just a minute. Alrighty, well, we will be here. 
Uh, Happy Geek School uniform. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I... Don't get me wrong, I like school uniforms. Like, I freaking loved my school uniforms in high school, which was uh, your traditional sailor um, school uniform type of thing. Um, I love that because, you know, it, it always reminded me I, I look like an anime girl. <laughs> Everyone else hated it in my class, and I was like, I get to wear a sailor uniform. <laughs> and I was just super happy, and I think it looks nice. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> It's not my go-to stuff to draw in me, and especially since, you know, I... It, it's a tricky question, but, you know, if I if I just draw in me in a, in a sailor uniform or in a school uniform, she will look even more Japanese than what we are trying to go for, so... So, yeah, I, I, I try to not go with that stereotype. <laughs> And I have no idea about pose, so I'm just gonna draw a few loose lines to see what, what I really wanna do. Maybe I'm just gonna do a thumbnail here. Because I did not even brainstorm about this. Maybe I'm just gonna have to write on that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna Usually I come to these last room prepared, but at the same time I think it might be interesting to see to let you guys see my brainstorming process. Yeah, you probably can't see much from these scribbles, but this is my brainstorming process. <laughs> I don't want too much foreshortening because I'm not sure what the others will look like. <clears throat> this is always the hardest part to come up with the basic idea of what to draw. <laughs> um, In the meantime, I'm, I'm making up my mind. <laughs> uh, little Mango, most of it written down on loose outline from Don't Worry, I planned the ending. That, that sounds pretty good and, you know, uh, I actually have the same, like, I, I only have the loose version of the story. But many things I just make up as I go. Of course, I, I do have the ending and the major plot points, so I just need to connect the dots. But yeah, I don't necessarily have all of the parts that connect the dots. And that's uh, not too bad because it leaves me room for a lot of improvising and changing things around. And sometimes that can be very, very useful. Because, you know, as, as I go with the story, I, I, I grow and improve as a writer as well. And, you know, it just happens that sometimes you just have a better idea or, or you know, you just find that the thing that you, you didn't think of at first and, you know, you, you come up with a new character or uh, have to do things differently, have to do things in a better way, you do research and that allows you with a lot of freedom. Um, Cat Boha, which outfit is easier to draw? Definitely your standard uh, with the hoodie <laughs> and the short. Uh, you know, I, I really like this outfit, but it's kind of hard to draw. So I already dread the moment when she will wear this in the comic because, <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of things. I love uh, the cape though. Oh, the cape is just so freaking epic. I, I love that in capes. Um, but for this, I think for the simplicity, I'm just gonna go with the hoodie and I probably just go with this pose. But for that, I need to change things around a little bit. Her hand a little bit. Okay, this is my very, very. Rough sketch. I'm just gonna refine it in another layer. Does it have to be a full body artwork? 
Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm just gonna make it a half of the and if it's needed I can draw. Or let's later on, I guess. I always forget to save. Like, for this artwork, I actually was already, like, I had already had a finished sketch and everything, I already started inking, and my laptop crashed and I never saved it. So, luckily I took a photo of it, <laughs> and I used the photo to trace my lines and redraw it again, but oh my god, it was such a pain in the ass. Uh, I actually did post those images on my Patreon with my supporters, and oh, it was painful. Mm. <laughs> you know, there are people who just name everything accurately in a nice way. I'm not one of those people. Uh, let's see at the comments why this is saving for me. <clears throat> uh, little Mango, I'm getting a degree in graphic design in college this upcoming semester. After working many years for it. Oh, that's really nice. Well, congrats and good luck with your last semester. That sounds pretty good. Um, Anna Hiavalos, what degree is useful for becoming a manga artist? I was thinking of majoring in English or journalism. Well, anything that can be helpful, like, uh, you know, uh, writing is certainly useful for uh, creating stories, uh, any kind of art, like, design, uh, character concept art, basic arts is is helpful of course uh, for comics. Um, I'm, I'm not sure where you're from so I don't know what's available in your area. Um, I know that certain countries don't have this kind of, like I, I know in Hungary I, I wasn't able to go for anything that will be overly useful for, co for comics. We, we had like one course in the whole country for animation and that was pretty much it, but I wasn't interested in animation but I think that's one of the closest to comics but I know in the US they have a bunch of useful um, courses that can be very very useful for comic artists like concept art and storyboarding and, and all this sorts of stuff. Of course, you know, storyboarding for comics and storyboarding for uh, movies and animation is very very different. So, <coughs> excuse me. So there's that. But you know, uh, comics is something you can also learn by, by self-studying. Um, nowadays, it's even easier than ever uh, because you have YouTube, you have a bunch of sites like Skillshare and uh, all the other sites where you can learn. So you don't necessarily need to go for something that's specific uh, for comic. I I think I usually recommend people go for like a, a solid plan B. Like, you know, it's very hard to make a living from comics, so if you can get a degree in something that can actually help you make a living while you're working on comics, that can be a very, very useful thing. <laughs> uh, Grimheim, hello, hello, it's so nice to see the familiar faces. <laughs> uh, Sanchez Knights, hi Sunny, I can't stay long, I'm at work. How are you doing? See you when I get out. Oh, thank you for joining us from work as well, and you know, you can always just watch the stream later. And um, I'm doing alright. <laughs> uh, despite being sick, so there's that, but... Uh, oh well. <laughs> uh, Ricardo Duron, uh, hello, I didn't get a notification in time. Oh, hey Ricky, uh, another one of my interns. <laughs> Um, well, don't worry, you didn't really miss much, I was just rambling here by making up this not too good looking sketch, so you're just about in time. <laughs> um, Sanchez Knights, fox girl request. <laughs> Actually, I just drew a fox girl the other day. <laughs> I, I actually did post that on my Patreon already. But you know, if you're interested, I can I can show it. 
in this dream. Uh, it was actually for a convention. I, I drew the mascot for this convention and she, she's actually a fox girl. So it was super fun because I... This convention is for uh, cosplayers mostly, so the mascot is also a cosplaying fox girl. So I drew this fox girl in a high Q cosplay. Because obviously it had to be high Q. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was super fun. You know, usually I, I don't really draw. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call her a furry because she just had fox tails and fox, like a fox tail and fox ears. So I, I don't know if that counts as furry or anything, but but yeah, it was <laughs> it was a lot of fun, especially since I did cosplay that character myself <laughs> at a convention. But that that that's history. So <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if you're interested, just let me know and I can pull the image here when I'm working on this. This is a hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Savage Bureau Arts. I've been reading volume 2 in the time. I'm not working on art or anything. I'm nearly done. Oh, awesome, awesome. Let me know how you like it. It's, it's always really nice to get feedback and I hope you're enjoying it. I, I, I personally think that volume, can, volume 2 turned out way better than volume 1 both art and story-wise, so I, I hope you're enjoying it too. Okay, so I'm gonna lower the opacity here, create a new layer, and now I'm gonna be refining the sketch. <coughs> of course I'm going here a little bit more with the blue to mark the eyes and the pointers for the face to make things a little bit easier for the fine sketch. Yeah, and I'm gonna start refining by having the canvas flip because actually I'm not really good at drawing characters facing to the left. So usually when I draw characters facing the left, I just flip the canvas and draw them facing to the right. <laughs> Easy tricks. That's something you can really easily do digitally. So that's one huge benefit for digital. Um, I'm gonna catch up a little bit with the comments. And then I'm gonna start refining. <clears throat> Zami9, hello, sorry I'm late, the computer was updating. No worries, you, you really didn't miss much. And, you know, it's nice to have you here. Uh, Sora MBK, yo, I'm French, je suis Francais. Uh, bienvenue, <laughs> I guess. I should be able to say something more in French, but I forgot so much. Like, I used to learn French for eight years and I can't remember much. Um, ceramic key, uh, to the last shot, uh, I'm French. I think that means that I read the chat. <laughs> oh my god, I'm, 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 I'm so bad with French, it's such a shame. Hey, hey, nice to see you here, Tony. Catboha, <laughs> uh, the purple hair fox girl. Yep, yep. Uh, her name is uh, Kitsuko. Um, Ricardo Duran, there are a few times where the answer isn't IQ. <laughs> there are a few times, yeah, but you know, it's <laughs> IQ is loved. <laughs> I love it so much, I, I just can't help it. Plus, you know, I, I was really behind schedule. Um, 
What does it say? Okay, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go there. Um, with that uh, commission for the convention, so I wanted to go with something, something simple. Like, you know, I was thinking that, you know, I could go something crazy because I literally could draw that fox girl in any kind of cosplay. Of course, you know, a bunch of cosplay has been already done, like, um, some someone already drew her in, like, Ruby uh, cosplay, which is such a shame because I really wanted to draw her in a, in a Ruby cosplay. Um, but an artist already did that, and she's actually one of my favorite Hungarian artists, and I was like, yeah, well, she did such an amazing job that I'm not just gonna bring this again. Um, so, so yeah, time was running out, and I was like, okay, so now I need something simple. Um, so, at first I was actually thinking that maybe I could draw her in Korra's outfit, because that's also pretty simple, and that's cool, and, you know, um... Everyone was always drawing her in like Japanese uh, like anime outfits. So I was thinking that you know maybe going for something a bit more Western could be nice. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I was like, I really just want to draw something with Haiki because I've been having my mind a lot around my my volleyball manga idea. So I was like, oh yeah, I could draw a little bit of a volleyball stuff, and that also could be. That Kitsuko in a Haikyuu cosplay. Plus, <laughs> um, you know, I, I wanted the artwork to, to show my style a little bit, and you know, Haikyuu is. <laughs> I'm not saying it's part of my style, but um, Haikyuu did play a huge role in developing my style. So there's that, so I decided to go with that. And right now I'm very tempted to do that cosplay because, like I mentioned, I did cosplay that uh, fox girl uh, for a convention many years ago. Um, so I still have the wig and the fox ears for that. I might even have the tail, and I do have a high cue cosplay <laughs> in Atos jersey. So I actually could do uh, that that cosplay that I just drew the mascot in. So. That would be kind of fun. I haven't cosplayed in years, so... So there's that. Um... Okay, so I see another French comment, and I know that that was a swear word, so I'm gonna hide that. <sighs> so my French is, yeah, it's still good for swearing, that's kind of sad. <laughs> uh, it's a bit bent tube, hi, hello. <laughs> that's, that's a cute username. <laughs> um, Savage Beards, I am, forget what chapter, but there was a cameo that caught me off guard and made me love, uh, love uh, plus I love Carly. Well, thank you. Everyone loves Carly. <laughs> oh my god. <I'm laughs> well, but if you only read Volume 1 and Volume 2, I'm not, not gonna spoil anything. But it, anyone who's caught up with Saigami, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I actually kind of wonder about the cameo. What kind of cameo? I can't remember, I, <laughs> I really need to look into my other chapters. Zemi9. Uh, Sunny, this is a hand, people. Me? No. <laughs> that is a burnt tree branch. <laughs> Sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> I see a hand in this. <laughs> oh my god, like... You should see some of my 
thumbnail sketches. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, no one would be able to, to see what, what's in those. But, you know, I see what, what I want to see in them, so <laughs> I guess it works. Like, like in this burn tree branch, I see the fingers and everything. But that's just probably me. But I think that that's pretty much for, for every artist that, you know, when we are doing our sketches and everything, we kind of see what we want to see in them. And of course, you know, for, for, a, for a sketch, that's okay. <laughs> because they don't necessarily have to be like, super refined. and read a bit of comments. Um, Brian Wilson, hi. How long were you making art? Oh boy, hi. <laughs> I've been drawing since high school, like in manga style. Well, I did start drawing my very first comic before high school, I think. So I was like 14 and now I'm just about to hit 30. So about 16 years. <laughs> Um, Kat Boha, speaking of Haikyuu, the next season is coming. I know, I'm so, super excited. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited. And we already know that it will come in January, so that's kind of sad because I thought it would come in like uh, the autumn season of anime, but apparently they are just releasing uh, two OVAs, which is also pretty good. Um, I hope we, we will get them. Uh, Crunchyroll had the last OVEs and the movies, so I hope they will have them too, so... So yeah, but, you know, January is not that far away, so I'm really looking forward to it. Magnus! Oh, hi there! Nice to see you! <laughs> hey Sunny, I think the music is a bit too loud. Oh, shoot, is it? Um... <laughs> it's kind of already coming from you. Maybe I just want people to enjoy your music! <laughs> So yeah, People Madness is uh, an amazing musician providing music to the channel. Um, in this playlist that you can hear in the background, the majority of the songs are his compositions, but there are a few like free YouTube musics as well. But if the music is too loud, I'm just gonna lower the audio a little bit and let me know if it's okay or it's too loud or or if you can hear me properly. I never asked that. I usually ask that in the beginning of the stream, but right now I, I just didn't even think of that, so... Yeah. <clears throat> uh, anime Forever Gaming. Hi! Hello! <laughs> uh, Savage Bears, I'll see you in later once you're feeling better. I still have the art that I have planned for you. Oh, thank you! <laughs> and you know where to find me on social media, so... so big. <laughs> I'm not too happy with this guy so far, so I'm gonna make some changes. find things by the link, I guess. <laughs> or I'm just gonna create a second layer of... Oh my goodness, her hair is... head is so big. This is one of my problems with digital. <laughs> I tend to zoom in too much and then I lose track of the proportions. Uh, hopefully I can do some easy fixes. Oh, well. <clears throat> uh, 
so I mean I'm I'm actually doing a study for a hand right now maybe that's why I'm a bit critical <laughs> no that's, that's absolutely fine like you know yeah you <laughs> I don't blame you and yeah you know when I I do proper sketches I tend to pay more attention to anatomy and accurate details but whenever I do my first uh, rough sketches it's just you know <laughs> I'm just marking things like yeah I, I want things to be like that but I never really pay much attention much attention to the details Like sometimes even my refined sketches, like sometimes I'm just scribbling, but I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it that while I'm in ink. And many times I regret that. Sometimes it's just easier to just leave things as they are, and I'm just refining them while I'm making. To the coating, I just mark uh, the folds and the wrinkles, and just a few scribbles. And those I usually always refine by inking. gonna butcher your name I'm sorry um, Emma that in VHS hi I'm actually practicing in drawing comics but I'm bad at drawing the elements so I took your way of drawing fire because it's so creative I wish you don't mind no no it's absolutely fine like uh, I'm actually happy to hear that you could take inspiration from my artworks and, and use it I mean you know that's that's how everyone does it um, how people are learning you know even the, the great master started by copying the great masters. So, well, of course, you know, I'm not saying that I'm a great master, it's just, you know, I, I learned to draw these things by copying other comic artists that I like. Like, uh, you know, for the fire, I know that I looked at uh, Fairy Tale and, and Naruto a lot, and, and, you know, I was just trying to come up with my way of drawing. And, and I think that's completely fine. Um, you know, as, as long as. You're not trying to like completely copy someone else's style, uh, but you're taking certain elements of their drawing style, like you know, how they draw fire or how they draw trees or hairs and stuff like that. That's also defined, and I think that's that's the easiest way to to develop your style or, or to come up with your style if you wanna. Um, yeah, that's how I do it as well. It's a little bit more like a hand now, but it's still not the best, so... I'm actually we're not too happy with this artwork, so... Very, very tempted to just scratch everything and just start something else. 
I mean, I still need to draw this. But I'm really not sure about this whole pose and everything. It's very, very, very static. Of course, at the same time, I don't want to go too flashy because it's literally really just, you know, heroes standing next to each other. So there's that. <coughs> Too many things I don't like. That's so a problem. I'm gonna redraw her face as well because I don't really like how it turned out. The struggle is real, <laughs> and it actually happens many times. I'm not sure about you guys, but yeah, sometimes it's just redrawing, redrawing, and redrawing. Sometimes it takes several redraws to just get things the right way. And sometimes it just doesn't work out and I'm completely scratching artworks. <laughs> like, I think I have too many artworks that I completely scratched. And I just didn't like the way they were turning out. a little bit of aesthetic screen, so yeah, there's that. Uh, more comics, I'm back. Oh, nice to be back! <laughs> Enjoy the stream, although I'm with the so far, it's not too exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my best here. But... Admittedly, I'm not in my best form <laughs> right now. But at least you get an insight of the authentic artist struggles. <laughs> change things around a little bit. There goes the burn tree branch. <laughs> I didn't want to go for foreshortening, but since the ball pose is just so stiff. I felt like that could help a tiny bit. I 
So yeah, artist advice. <laughs> if your order is too stiff, try some for shortening. <laughs> that stuff is dynamic, so that can always help. Oh my god, make it mad. Oh my god, what did I do? I'm not sure what just happened. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm gonna make a quick save. Uh, Savage Beards, it happened recently with me when working on my Pokemon art. I was driving a bird Pokemon and its lag and beak were giving me trouble. Yep, yep, I I understand the struggle. <laughs> uh, Zeminine, off-topic question. Are there any traditional Hungary dancing events? If so, did you ever do them? My mom is teaching me some Scottish folk dancing. <coughs> um, actually, we do have a lot of uh, like Hungarian folk dancing events. Like if you go to like a fair or festival uh, in any town or heck even in villages, you will see some Hungarian folk dancing. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty much love the traditional um, when it comes to those. I never did those. Uh, <laughs> I I'm, I'm really bad at dancing. Um, like super bad at dancing <laughs> because I'm, I'm not good with uh, movement coordination and um, I'm, I'm basically like tone deaf like I, I can't hear the rhythm so <laughs> I was I was doomed from the beginning when it comes to dancing um, I, I knew some very basic stuff like you know if you go to a wedding I can dance a few traditional Hungarian uh, dances but like the, the like the two most basic forms which is you know just a few steps I can do those um, but I, I never did anything <laughs> more than that <coughs> like yeah I, I'm, I'm really bad at that but uh, you know it's, it's always nice to look at those those dances uh, whenever there's like a like a fair or a festival in my town I, I enjoy looking at those because some of them look pretty awesome like you know, if you're interested, I would recommend to to search on YouTube because I'm pretty sure you will see some crazy Hungarian folk dances um, and some of the the folk, um, um, like the traditional folk clothing, is interesting, and I, I like some of them, some of the designs. Um, so, so yeah, we are we're pretty big on dancing. Not me personally. <laughs> I just suck. <laughs> Um, like I, I did learn some contemporary dancing in elementary. I did it, I think, for two years. Uh, I took part in like a stage play, and that was it for me in dancing. <laughs> because I just went, yeah, I'm not, I, I just can't do it. Um, so yeah, I, I can learn a few choreographies, but you know, I, I just need to learn the movements and. That's pretty much it because I, I, I don't hear the rhythm and the music properly. So uh, I just can't do it when you know, they, they say that, you know, you just move your body to the rhythm. And I'm like, but I can't hear the rhythm. How am I supposed to do that? So, so yeah. Uh, I'm just pumping to myself. I'm going to this a little bit bigger.
Everybody up again for this pose. Can comics can you show us how you paint fire sometime? Yep. Um, like um, like uh, with, with with colors, uh, you mean, or just the normal way I draw fire in like black and white for the comic? I, I can do both, but um, which one are you interested in the most? Because that's pretty easy and fast, so I can show it pretty quickly. Yeah, I will need it for this artwork as well because I'm going to have some fire here. Of course, uh, this artwork still needs a few hours before I can start coloring it. Comics, yes, color. Thanks. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna finish uh, this sketch layer, and then I can show uh, how I usually do the colors uh, for fire. Cause that's pretty simple. It's just a little bit of a trick with some tools and layers, and it's like magic. <laughs> Uh, Hitoshi mode, hello, how long do you take to draw a picture? It depends. Um, simple illustrations like the one I'm working on, I would say about two hours, three hours maybe. It depends on how difficult they are. Like, I've already been working on this for, well, not for an hour, but I started the stream an hour ago, so... So yeah, I've been working on this for about now, like, 40 minutes, I think. So usually like a half of the artwork like this with simple coloring is usually two to three hours and some some more complicated artworks like for example this one this one took forever like I, I'm not sure if you can see it properly but this was a, a, a shoot what is it called like a painting style that doesn't use any line art so it's just the contours and everything uh, but I didn't use a line art, I was just coloring and using, using the colors for everything, so... Plus, I, I did work a crazy amount of time on the small details, like, you probably haven't seen it properly, but I put in a lot of details into the metal and the leather and everything, so this took, like, forever, like, on this artwork, I think I spent more than 16 hours. <laughs> I know, that's a, that's a crazy, crazy... Uh, amount of time and I plus you know I, I did the background here and everything which looks super simple but at the same time you know it, it took me time to figure things out so the fastest in, in this world drawing was actually the fire <laughs> so that was super fast and easy but everything else was taking forever <clears throat> Uh, Cat Boha, maybe this question is not matching here, but a kind of detective-ish like story with supernatural elements and monsters, mythological creatures, with a fan protag is fitting in a shonen category. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, mystery detective story with, yeah, yeah, I, I, absolutely. Um. Yeah, and you know, just because you have a, a female protagonist doesn't mean it can be um, a shonen. Like, you know, reading this um, this description, it 
it I'm not saying it reminds me, but I would say it's probably the closest to uh, like the Promised Neverland or Yaxtukuno Neverland. Um, which is basically a female protagonist, it's kind of a mystery, not really detective-ish, but you know, there was a lot of mind games in that, with supernatural elements, monsters and everything, and it's a shonen, it's, it's a shonen jump, it's one of their most popular series right now, so absolutely, yeah. with the tree branches again. <laughs> uh, we can comics, not the drawing. Thank you, thank you. It's I'm, um, you know, uh, I'm still seeing a bunch of mistakes, and I, I wasn't sure I meant to, to just stop working on it. Like I was like, should I refine the details a bit more? Should I put in some more contrast here and there? But at the same time, I was running out of time. In fact, I ran out of time so much that this was supposed to be the. Like, this was this is still the final, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this was supposed to be on the cover of issue 107 and it ended up being in issue 109, so <laughs> yeah, there's that. But I'm, 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 I'm happy how it turned out. I, 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 I like this artwork. Not perfect. Um, this painting style is still very difficult for me and I'm not sure if it suits me or not, but you know, it, it was... It was a lot of fun to work on, even though it took like literally forever. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Dummy Nine. Uh, have to dinner now. Hopefully, I come back. Well, enjoy your supper and yeah, we hope to see you back. Uh, Sanchez now it's back for a bit, but I miss. Uh, but I basically just redraw the wall of artwork. Kinda. <laughs> and yeah, I answered a few questions, but you know, don't worry, you will be able to watch the part you missed later on. The stream will be available, so. So everyone can catch up. fingers later. Okay, now I'm not overly worried about them. Like, fingers are usually a thing that I only uh, refine when I'm making it. Fine enough. <laughs> I'm gonna go for a little bit for sure to make this one too. A little bit. Yeah, should be good. Yeah, that's a proper hand. <laughs> um, Mechan Comics. It definitely suits you. It looks great. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, I might do some more artworks like that in the future, so. I mean, I definitely will need to do more artworks like that, but I, I wasn't sure if that style, uh, coloring style, is good for a long term because it, I, I like how it looks, but yeah, it's I, I need to improve a lot with that, so so we shall see. Um, Sanchez, nice shout out to your Patreon. Oh yeah, shout out to all of my amazing supporters on Patreon. If you don't know, I do have a Patreon where you can get some extra content for me in exchange of your support. Like uh, my Patreons get exclusive artworks uh, every month, behind the scene contents like sketches, access to my sketchbooks and studies, um, a bunch of VIP shots. Like um, I always post artworks I'm working on, pages I'm working on with description and all sorts of stuff. 
uh, some exclusive video content, <coughs> we do have a Discord, and things like that. So yeah, if you if you want some more content from me and you can afford supporting financially, then please check out my Patreon. And of course, you can read about all of the perks I have. I I have various perks. You know, some of them, like the higher tiers, include like private tutoring. Like if you want to learn directly from me, you can have like uh, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, video call, and I can show you things uh, how I draw, how you can draw them. I can give you feedback on your content, story, artwork, all sorts of stuff. And of course, there are the lower perks that are just a few dollars every month, and those still include a bunch of uh, exclusive content and behind the scenes stuff. And of course, uh, if you want to support me in my works, there are other ways as well. Like, you, know, you can get my books, like Ami Volume 1 and Volume 2 are available worldwide via Amazon or uh, major book depository sites. And of course, there's Saturday AM, the magazine. And if you subscribe uh, through my link, which you can find in the description, uh, your subscription fee, uh, a chunk of it goes directly to me. So you can support me by subscribing to the magazine and you will get um, a year worth of issues of our magazine, or you can go premium and you can uh, also receive Saturday PM. And now I'm just thinking that I think the model changed, so now it's kind of different. It's still the same, so <laughs> oh my god, I'm so not up to date, I'm sorry. So, yeah, you, you still support the creator whose link you're using by subscribing, but I think right now, yeah, we, we do have like a monthly fee. Yeah, we do have a monthly fee, but at the same time, we have a yearly subscription where you will get every issue for the year for Saturday and Saturday PM. And of course, it's cheaper uh, a long term to subscribe for a whole year than going for the monthly, but you can also do the monthly. I suck at marketing so much. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just glad because I know that Fred Duke doesn't watch these live streams. <laughs> so now he won't chew me out if I messed up. <laughs> so yeah, please check out the links I have. <laughs> Little Mango, I learned from you and other artists. I might do the same drawing to sketch layers, one loose and the second more refined before the definite line art. Before I just did one sketch layer before line art. Yeah, I absolutely recommend. Like, you know, if you're working digitally, you can have as many layers as you want. Um, of course, you don't want to go overboard with it. But yeah, many times I have like at least this too. Like, I usually have like a very rough um, uh, sketch layer, then I have a more refined, and many times I have an even more refined uh, sketch layer before jumping in uh, to doing the actual line art and it helps tremendously like it's just so much easier like this is one of the best thing I love about digital art that I can have these layers I can play around with the colors the opacity and that's something you you can do properly on on paper like sure you can use you know a blue lead a red lead and, uh, and the proper black graphite and all the stuff but at the same time this is just so much easier because you know you can just make it go away and you still have your other sketch, you can move it around. Oh my god, I just love it so much. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. And I'm still not too happy with this pose. So I'm just gonna move things around a little bit. Uh, Ricardo Duran. Yeah, guys, her Patreon is where it's at. Pops party popper. <laughs> Speaking from experience, ladies and gentlemen. 
We have a lot of fun at the Patreon. <laughs> or at least I know I do. <laughs> it's, you know, sometimes it's just so much fun to share things that are just happening. Like, uh, people on my Patreon often see my messed up artworks or some older stuff or, you know, just, just getting my rambling <laughs> thoughts on, on everything I do. Like, like, you know, I do post a bunch of stuff on my Instagram. You you, you get to see a bunch of my artworks and uh, and progress shots on Instagram, but usually it's just a very brief, that, yeah, I'm working on this, maybe a sentence, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but on my Patreon, I go full out, and you receive the whole package of what's going through Sunny's mind <laughs> by creating this stuff. So, so yeah. <laughs> It's a debate emergency done and now you're gonna hear this whether you want it or not. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I many many times I just need to to went about the whole creative process. Of course, you know it's pretty much like these live streams. Like during these live streams I'm just talking and talking and talking and talking. <laughs> and sometimes I, I just make no sense and I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Kinda. And yeah, this is... This is me creating. <laughs> of course, in this stream I probably don't speak that much. Because my heart, my throat just hurts so much. But, but yeah, it's... <laughs> you know, being an artist is many, many times, it's, it's a lonely thing. So it's, it's just nice to be able to to share the whole process. Just nights. If you could draw a Marvel or DC comic, uh, who would you want to draw? Um, like for hmm. Well, Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel hero, so I really would enjoy that. Um, at the same time, I really would want to draw something female-oriented. So, you know, for Marvel, maybe, you know, like, Captain Marvel could be fun, uh, I like her. Um, for DC, I know it's not what you're expecting to hear from DC, but recently Rooster Teeth just got to deal with DC, so they are releasing Genlock and Ruby comics. So I would die to draw, like, a Ruby comic for DC, like, oh my god, <laughs> that would be so amazing. I, I, I would really love that. Like. I, I I already seen uh, some cover image they posted and it just looks so freaking gorgeous uh, and and I really like that you know normally I'm I'm not that much into like Western comic style but that is to die for and yeah I I would be super excited to to work on something like that of course you know I I probably would take like a position that's you know. Um, Usually with Western comics you have a penciler and ink colorist and stuff like that. So I probably would only want to do like a smaller chunk of the work. Because yeah, doing like full colored comics would be just so overwhelming. I'm not sure if I would be able to do that. Like I, I don't think so that coloring. So I, I surely would hope that someone would color those artworks for me and like wouldn't be the one doing it. But yeah, penciling and inking, that would be like super fun. Especially inking, I, I really like inking. <clears throat> uh, Sanchez nice. I should rebound myself so both I and my artist have a better match. This is... good night. Okay. <laughs> uh, Grandma, of course, you can also sketch Mesli in 
paper to then erase it and draw over it. That's how artists of uh, that no, does it. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I've been doing that for 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 years. That's how I, I used to draw. Like I I did erase things. Um, I I I did draw with different colors of lead and stuff like that. But I still stand by the fact that it's just easier uh, digitally. I'm not saying that you can do it traditionally. You you can. Um, but of course, it also comes down to how heavy-handed you are. I tend to be heavy-handed when it comes to drawing. So there are only a certain amount of times I can erase without damaging the paper. So for me, that, that always was a huge concern. So many times when I did colored artworks, what I did was I just traced over the artwork. Like, I had a paper where I did all of my messy sketches, and when it came to inking, I just put a whole new paper on top of it, I used a tracing box and I just traced over uh, my line art so I don't have to draw that messy thing. And I know many artists are doing that with comic pages as, as well, like they, they have a sketch page and they do all of the inking on a completely new sheet of paper on a tracing board. <coughs> and you know, that, that works, I mean that's how people did it for, for decades, it's just now we do have an, an easier alternative for that. Uh, digital. Oh boy, now I think that I'm going to do change canvases again. And I'm gonna just go for those legs because I'm a little bit afraid that I might need a full body shot for this. There we go. I'm gonna raise the opposite a little bit for the legs. And then I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, these are legs. <laughs> Not three branches. <laughs> uh, Sanchez Nice, is the Patreon and Discord active? Um, well, the Patreon I post uh, every week. There are weeks when I post like multiple times, uh, but surely every week. And um, you know, there are also the rewards uh, sent out uh, monthly or. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I tend to I try to be as active as I can on Patreon. Especially when I'm working on, on multiple stuff, then you will see a lot of quotes from me. Like uh, for example, I was doing that uh, big huge background shot for the latest issue of Saturday AM. And I was actually posting every 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 shot of that, how I did it and, and stuff like that. So so I, I I try to post a lot of content there. Um, as for the Discord uh, currently it's not so active um, because we don't have that many people but there were times when we had good conversations there about shows and all sorts of stuff and you know you can also post uh, artworks on the discord uh, to get feedback from me directly so there's that option as well because you know normally I, I don't give out feedback because you know I receive messages every day People sending me artworks asking, asking for uh, feedback and, and stuff like that and I just don't have the time to answer for everyone. So I left the window open um, that via the Patreon Discord people can still send me uh, their artwork pages and stuff like that and they receive feedback from me. <clears throat> so there's that. <laughs> Uh, Najib Ahmad Safri, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Hello, I'm new here, thanks for having me. Oh, well, welcome to the stream and I hope you enjoy your very first Saigami Project live stream. Please have fun. <laughs> we do have the narwhals here. <laughs> and usually try to have a good time and a good conversation. So feel free to post any questions you have, it can be art related or you, know, you can just ask me anything, even if it's off topic or anything. And generally just enjoy the stream. 
Solomon Jackson, what inspired you to become a comic book creator? Well, I always wanted to tell stories, like create stories. Um, even when I was a kid, like I couldn't even write properly yet, but I was already coming up with stories. Like it's kind of fun because right now I'm staying at my mom's place, and she just took out some very very old paper um, that I wrote when I was six, and it had like different stories. Like I I completely butchered the letters, you know. Like I I just tried to draw the letters. I remember them properly before I started preschool or preschool, elementary school, yeah, sorry, but <laughs> but yeah, so I, I always had a passion of, of creating stories and coming up with things, and um, I actually wanted to write novels um, when I was in elementary, like I, I did start writing my own little novels, um, but I just felt like something is missing, like I I, I felt like it's, it's just not, not the whole package that I have in my mind. Um, so I still kept writing, but I, I didn't know how to express myself properly. And then I realized that I, I actually like uh, comics and I felt like I can express what I can't write down through my artworks. So I read uh, Naruto first when I was around 14 years old and I was like oh my god I love this so much I, I, I should try to do this and I should do my stories in this format so so yeah I, I give it a try I sucked very very hard like <laughs> if you go back to one of my videos I did not so long ago about my very first uh, story and uh, character artwork you will see that I was really bad at it but at the same time, I felt like that, yeah, comics is what I want to do. It's, it's how I can express myself the best. And the rest is history. I, I kept striving to get better and better. And I tried to improve my stories, come up with different stories. And I, after a while, I thought that was good enough. I wasn't. But I thought I was. I, I sought publishers and... Yeah, when I was in uh, college, I got published first in Hungary, and then I started publishing online in English, and that's how I also found Saturday AM. And the rest is indeed history. <laughs> um, Sanchez Nights. Uh, if only Ruby were still good. Rest in peace, Monty. He brought so much to the table. Yeah, Monty was incredible, and yeah, um, I still think Ruby is good, though. I I don't want to start an argument or anything. I know that many people don't like Ruby anymore. I personally think that the seasons are getting better and better. Like my favorite season so far was season five. Uh, but season 6 had some really great episodes and moments, so I, I personally really like where the story is going. And, and of course, you can still feel um, that the five scenes just aren't the same without Monty, but I think the crew is doing a really good job um, moving forward, forward uh, with his legacy, so I'm, I'm super excited to see where it's going. Sanchez Nice, if you did work for Marvel or DC, you would only be responsible for the basic pencil work. Someone else will ink and color your work. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. That must be nice. <laughs> and you don't have to do all the work alone.
Let's go choose our soul messy. <laughs> At least you get to see the whole creative process. <laughs> like, you know, it's so frustrating whenever I watch speed drawings and the artist is only showing like the good parts. Like, you know, only the parts where they are just refining and everything is looking so smooth and easy and like it's just a snap and it's the perfect art. And, you know, sometimes it's just like, I want, just want to see the struggle. Just, just show me the hard parts where, where you, you, you just can't get that other eye right or something like it can be so freaking refreshing to to just sometimes see an artist erase or just make mistakes and, and correct those mistakes <laughs> like seriously and I, I personally prefer when when artists are showing the realistic side of being an artist that you know, many times you, you just struggle and you just can't get things right the first try because that, that's how it is <laughs> Savage Beer Arts, I hope I can get back to digital soon. I was just trying to practice a way of coloring, but things are once again complicated with my laptop. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Well, I, I will have my fingers crossed, and I hope that your laptop will get better, and you will be able to do digital <laughs> again. Uh, Sir Shabby, sorry that I was late. How long are you going to stream? Uh, that's okay, you know, you can always catch up with the stream later on. Um, it will be available. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, still on the roll with this, so I still have to show how to do fire. <laughs> uh, plus, again, I need to finish this artwork as soon as I can. Because today is my my day for doing art. And tomorrow I will have a little bit more time to do as well. But, uh, yeah, now that I'm back at work, <laughs> it's kind of hard to to find time for art as much as I did. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm not sure we've been doing this for an hour and a half. I would say at least one more hour, probably. I, I will try to keep it um, under three hours. <laughs> I said that the last time and last time we like broke a record. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of easy to lose track of time when you're having fun. So we shall see, but surely at least one more hour. Uh, Ricardo Duron, what's your favorite Saturday AM meme from the ones you've seen so far? Uh, like the ones about the pitches and the one shots. Oh yeah, <laughs> like there's so many hilarious memes. I love them. Um, Shoot, which one is my favorite so far? Evidently, I really did like the one uh, with the Sakai protagonist and Ayumi. <laughs> of course, I'm biased on that, so there's, you know, yeah. <laughs> that hit very close to home. But I, I just love that, like, everything was so spot on with the faces and everything. <laughs> it was so true. So that one is surely one of my favorite. I really like the ones um, with the pitches and the one shots. <laughs> Uh, do you... I also really like the one that's like, so you're new here? And the guy's like, yeah, this is my 107th time of pitching for Saturday AM. <laughs> like, that's also super fun. Uh, yeah, there, there were a lot of them that I, I just did enjoy. It was super fun. Like, people are just so creative with these memes. I love them. I, I'm a sucker for memes anyway, so... It's, it's a really, really funny event we're doing. And if you don't know what we're talking about right now, Saturday AM does have an Amino app. And on the Amino app, we are having a meme competition. And it's just hilarious. Like, oh my god, it's so much fun. The Amino community is fun to begin with. So if you want to have more fun with Saturday AM, with our creators, or just with like-minded people who are also creating comics, I recommend you to check us out on Amino Apps. I should have a link for that as well in my link tree, so in my profile. 
but if not, you, you just need to get the amino app and um, you can just look for the Saturday M Comic Creators community and you just join the community, please follow the rules and, and have fun. Like, uh, we are having like, uh, I'm having a brain fart, exclusive live chats on the amino app, often with our creators and uh, with our CEO Frederick. So you can get a lot of information there, you can ask questions to our creators, we're having some posts, some behind the scenes contents, and yeah, we're always having some fun competitions every month. <coughs> so it's not just about the main, but sometimes you know, it's like character artwork, fan art, and lots of fun stuff. So I can, I can only recommend it. Um, Ishan Verma, hey there, just new here. I wanted some tips on switching from traditional to digital. I've been doing traditional quiet bar, but I'm somehow not able to switch to digital. Any tips? Uh, but switching to digital is not easy. It took me a lot of time. But I, I think uh, that switching to digital comes down to finding the right tool and the right software for you. Uh, for example, I had like. Uh, a non-display tablet, like a, a Wacom Intuos and several cheaper tablets before that, but I just couldn't get the hang of it that I had to draw while my hand was driving on the tablet, my, my eye was looking at the monitor, and I just never could master that. And, you know, that was a struggle for me, and I felt like I could never switch to digital. But the moment I got a display tablet, like a driving monitor, I felt like yeah, I think I, I can do that switch, but even then it took me time because I felt like I'm not finding the right tools, it, it doesn't feel the same, uh, my inking looks different, so it took extra time for me to actually, you know, get Clip Studio, get some custom tools in Clip Studio, like custom inking tools, a custom pencil, that made me feel like I'm comfortable with this. So, experiment. Um, as much as you can and try to find the right tools and you know it won't happen just overnight so allow yourself uh, time with these new tools and, and you know try out different things give them several tries because sometimes it's, it's just a struggle at first because you're you know you're not familiar with the surface you're not familiar with the tools it, it's just different so sometimes it, it just takes time to get used to but you know once you get the hang of it you you find some features that are making things easier for you maybe some things will work out even better so so just give it time and and, and try try out everything you can that, that that's what works for me and you know if, you, if you're interested i actually do have a video um where i talk about me switching over to digital and how i felt like traditional art was holding me back you can find the video, I think the title is Switching to Digital Bus Tradition Not Holding Me Back. So so I recommend checking out that video and, and maybe you can find some extra help in that. Okay, saving. Uh, Sanchez Knights, Ruby is just going for the Tumblr crowd. Rooster Tears is really tanking the show, unfortunately. I respectfully disagree with that. Um, but you know, that, that's your opinion, um, I, I'm not here for an argument, so, <clears throat> so yeah. I, I still like the show and I feel like it's doing better and, and yeah, you know, the numbers aren't lying, so they, they have some, some better results and some really good collaborations, so I'm, I'm just super excited for the future of Ruby. Um, Shadow Wolfgang, Wolfgang GX, hello, hello there. <laughs> uh, book and comics, uh, maybe you might have time sometimes to do a uh, beginner's video on using and uh, setting up with studio. I keep using Comic Draw as, uh, I have still to learn with studio. Yeah, actually that's, yeah, um, I, I really should be doing that. Um, yeah, I wonder if I would just do a proper video or maybe a live stream where people can ask questions. I'm not sure which would be the best because 
yeah, there are, there are a lot of things where I, I could go through all of the tools and some custom tools have to customize some stuff and, and everything. So yeah, that would be interesting. Of course, you know, I can only do like the, the PC version because I know that Clip Studio is slightly different if you, you have an iPad. Um, but generally it should be the same. So, so yeah, doing the tutorial would still be uh, helpful. So yeah, I, I definitely should be doing that. Um, let me know in the comments if you think that would be easier to do as a live stream or as a proper video. And, and I'm gonna work on that in the future. Uh, Kat Boha. <laughs> Hungarian comment. Um, Shoot, I'm not even sure how to translate that. <laughs> I'm having a brain fart right now. It's hard to translate Hungarian into English. But yeah. <laughs> she kinda has long legs here, yeah. Not that long, but yeah. She's growing maybe. <laughs> she she's getting older. She's she's getting taller. She actually did get taller. Like <laughs> we officially did change her height. Um, so yeah, now she's 5'4", I think. So yeah, she, she's slightly taller than she used to be. So she, she's growing up. And she, she's also getting older, like, there... In the manga did not much, because there's not much time that went by in the manga. But she will get older in the comic as well. And you know, fun fact, it's actually today is Ayumi's birthday like you know all of my characters I gave them birthday and Ayumi's birthday is the 21st of August so hey birthday girl <laughs> so yeah maybe she's, she's older here now and she's taller Shamberma, thank you so much and love your art. Well, thank you and enjoy the stream and enjoy the video and, and I hope that you will get the hang of digital. I know it can be hard and frustrating. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, you know, uh, it, it was very hard for me too. So, so don't give up if, if you feel like it's not working out for you. Um, because yeah, it, it, it's really about finding the right tools. For it and, and allowing yourself to to have time with the switch. <clears throat> okay, I want the blue layer anymore. Uh, this one should be refining this one a little bit. Uh, Zeminine, I saw Ayumi's angry face in the latest chapter. Was Fred nagging you that much? <laughs> Um, actually, no. <laughs> well, that's a good point there. I wonder if it was like subconsciously. I was like, I need to make Aimi more fierce. <laughs> but at the same time, no, I really wanted to draw. Um, well, I don't want to spoil that much, of course. I think some of it was already posted on Instagram on the Saturday M channel. So. So yeah, like I, I've been thinking a lot on how to to deal with the emotions in the current arc. Like um, if you if you're up to date with the manga, you know that there were some tough stuff going on, and and yeah, Ayumi is right now in a in a very very tough position. Where 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 well, well I, I can't English. Sorry. <clears throat> well, she she kind of she kind of has to deal with a lot of stuff emotionally, and and you know uh, I wanted to show her 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 growth uh, to the recent chapter, and and yeah I was I was I was working on this chapter a lot like I rewrote it several times because it, it was hard to to nail the right emotion. Like, I wanted to show her growth while, you know, 
I shoot, how do I say this without spoiling anything? Like, I felt like showing her growth was the easiest by showing that she just can't afford to have like an emotional breakdown. But at the same time, there are just so much pressure, so much emotion, so much frustration building up in her that I was like, I, I need to have her be angry. I, I need to let her be angry. And, and, you know, it wasn't just for the comical factor of having her be angry or, or anything like that. But, you know, I tried to be, be real with these feelings. And, um, and it, it was hard to write um, because obviously I didn't want it to feel forced and out of character for her. But at the same time, I felt like that this is how I need to uh, have her in the, this chapter in order to, to show everything I, I felt like was going on in, in, inside of her. So, so yeah, I actually did have a lot of fun with this chapter because it, it kind of felt different compared to, to previous chapters. Where, you know, it, it wasn't action or anything, but it was just focusing on the emotional world of the characters. So, so yeah, I, I actually did enjoy drawing Angry Ayumi and it wasn't spread. <laughs> Making me do that. <clears throat> uh, Cat Boha, Daddy Long Legs, the original, I guess. <laughs> Seriously, is it that long? <laughs> like it doesn't look that long to me, but now it's not looking. Okay, maybe. Okay. <laughs> That's Sailor Moonish kind of long, but yeah, I, I think I see your points there. Making those legs a little bit shorter. <laughs> Ricky Duran, oh my god, I only had a growth spurt, <laughs> it's canon, confirmed. <laughs> yeah, she just suddenly grew two inches <laughs> within two chapters. Only 15 minutes passed by in the story, but she just grew suddenly. <laughs> it happens. I wish it would happen to me. Better now? <laughs> uh, Ricky Duran. Gaps sings happy birthday. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm sure she's happy. <laughs> well, not right now in the manga, but still. <laughs> um, Najib Ahmad Safri, what dropping tablet are you using? Thanks for, uh, thanks in advance for replying. Uh, this is uh, let's see. XP pen artist 15.6. This is the tablet I'm using right now. <clears throat> it's uh, the older 15.6. They do have now a pro version, which is super neat and has some new features, but this is the older model. Uh, they also do have an XP pen 13.3 pro. Uh, we just came out and I'm super excited because one is right now on the way for me um, Because XPPM was kind enough to send me one of their tablets So my next video will be a review on that tablet And I'm super excited to try it out because it has a bunch of shiny new features and, and, and I'm really excited So, so yeah they actually do have some birthday deals right now, so if you're interested in their tablets, they have some pretty good discounts on these display tablets. So yeah, um, I don't have any links for them, but uh, check out their products, because I, I really do enjoy these few pans. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this was uh, not sponsored shout out, I don't know why. The next video will be sponsored by them, so yeah, there's that. <clears throat> um, Ricardo Duran, wait, do people in Austria have a different happy birthday song? Huh. 
I did not think about that. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, well, why not? They could have. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I'm just gonna do like a spin off chapter for that. <laughs> Birthday traditions in Astria. That could be fun. Like, I know that, you know, I, I had that spin off chapter for the Christmas, and we know that they don't have Christmas. So, yeah, now it's a very good question if they do have birthdays like we do. Oh my god. I have so many things in my mind going on right now. <laughs> that, that probably will be like a, a speed off chapter. <laughs> uh, Ricardo Duran, no, no, don't wish to be tall. I can't fit anywhere. <laughs> well, at least I have that going on for me. <laughs> I fit in everywhere and usually that's not fun because you know when you're small you're always the one who who has to travel in the most uncomfortable ways because you're like oh you're small you will fit in here like in the trunk <laughs> and stuff like that so so there's that but at the same time you know I can just sleep in an armchair and I fit perfectly so yeah <laughs> I, I think both being tall and both being short has their benefits and ups and downs. I, I just wish I had a few more centimeters, like like just just a few. <laughs> okay, so my schedule is kind of okay. Still have a bunch of issues, but for now I promised that fire coloring, so I'm just gonna do some fire here for you guys. So I'm just going to put this in a folder because I like to create folders for my colors and my line arts. Where this folder has to go up here already. So now I will have a layer for the fire. So I'm just gonna catch up with the comments a little bit and then I'm gonna do a fire coloring. At first saving. Saving is important. Um Boha. No, I mean Nyoki Bapu's original title is Dead Long Legs. If I... oh, okay, okay, I, I did not know that. Okay. <laughs> I learned something today too. Uh, Daisuke Uchiha, hello. Roro, hello. Well, hello. Um, Zami9, Sunny. She just grew. I wish that would happen to me. Me. Yes, puberty, growing pain, flashbacks. You don't know what you're asking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, for me, that was so long ago that I don't even remember. <laughs> like, literally, I haven't grown an inch ever since I was, like, 11. Like, literally. The last time I grew, I was 11. So I can't remember. <laughs> so long ago. And yeah, I'm the same height as an 11-year-old kid. Like, there, there are kids of that age who are taller than me. And it's just, oh my god, it's just so frustrating. Savage so Beards, I'm like six feet and a few inches. I never even imagined reaching this side. Wow. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> Some of us are just five feet tall and that's it for us. <laughs> Okay, so Mugen Animation says hello. Well, hello Mugen. Welcome to the stream. Right now I'm gonna present how I do fire. <clears throat> so, first of all, I'm just switching to a random pen. Like, let's say a G pen. And I'm just gonna put down a couple of colors uh, for my basic layer. Like, I'm putting down some red. Some orange, some yellow. It's very rough. I I, I don't really go in with details. I'm going into a little bit of a brighter red. You can go in with anything. Like you know, if you want to do it in blue, then you can do it in blue. And then I'm switching over to the blend tool, and I'm choosing a fingertip in a oh, decent size. And right now, what I'm gonna do 
I'm gonna just blend these colors in a in a baby motion. Like I pay attention to the motion, so it looks a little bit fiery. And at the same time, I'm also going in from the sides, so it doesn't have such solid edges. But you know, it kind of looks a little bit more like fire. And of course, you know, if you want, you can do it in a very swirly way, like um, how here I, I went in with a bunch of swirls because I wanted to have that kind of swirly. And I'm waving around with my arms so much and you can't even see that, but I'm doing it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm going in with, with this swirls here and, and yeah, just, just paying attention that it has that, that flamey baby. motion and this is the basic layer and now I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna go to add glow. Uh, you can also go with color dodge or glow dodge or just simply add. Um, they are very similar but at the same time uh, they are basically kind of the same but not the same so you can experiment by changing um, the layer mode and see what it does. And what I'm gonna do here, um, I always experimented this phase because right now I'm on this red color and I have no idea how it will look like if I'm on the add glow mode. So I'm just going over the flames like this. So I see that, oh yeah, it, it doesn't look bad. Um, but maybe I want to go for something lighter as well, but I'm just gonna put down a little bit of this here and there. And then I'm gonna switch over to a lighter color. I'm going over it and maybe I'm just gonna switch over to something very bright. And now I'm gonna go back to the fingertip tool and gonna repeat the same thing I did, going over. Flames. Uh, I don't mind if I'm going out of the lines because, you know, that's it's making it a little bit more flamey as well. But if you want to stay inside your line, you can just clip it and that works as well. You can also put uh, the fingertip tool in eraser mode if you feel like it's a bit too much. Like you don't want it to be like over texturized. And of course, if you want to go uh, like extra crazy, you can create one more layer in an extra color color mode, or you can go back to your base layer and add some lighter colors there to have like more of a blazing effect, or you know, some more scorching heat. You can add some darker colors. You can add some lighter colors. It's completely up to you. Like, experiment, like, nah, I'm not awarding hang this, I'm, I'm just doing it and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's looking good, that, that's pretty cool. And of course, what I still like to add is flying fire particles or just flying ember and stuff. Uh, you can do that in different ways. Um, like, there is actually, uh, I can't remember where it was. Oh yeah, uh, there it is. Like Clip Studio has like an ember tool. Like you can just add that. It's kind of cheaty, but you know it, it looks cool. Um, so you can do that. Or what I like to do is just go in with a pan and um, add some particles here and there. You know, over your fire, next to your fire. You can do it with different layers for the different effects. And of course, you know, you can do it over the artwork, like I will have some particles flying around the Yumi as well. You can do it with all sorts of colors, starting from like a very dark red to a very bright yellow light. And if you want to go for some extra sassy effect, then you can also blur them a little bit. 
like you know indicating the movement you can also do the same with your fire so it doesn't have such solid edges if you want of course if you're doing this uh, you might want to do it with both layers but it's up to you if you want to go for more solid kind of feeling fire then you can keep the edges like that but you can also uh, do it like this <coughs> So that's pretty much how I do fire. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. This is the basic kit. Uh, sometimes I do more layers. Like uh, it depends on the artwork. Like for this, I think I had like three or four layers because I had some some very soft uh, like glowing effect underneath the flames and I had several layers um, of the particles and the swirly flames here so sometimes it, it's a few more layers here and there but generally it's mostly just two layers uh, one with the solid colors using the fingertip tool and one with the glow effect and yeah like I said if you change the the blending mode or the color mode it will change the look so you can experiment with that i like to go with the add glow because that gives the effect that makes it most vibrant to me so so yeah that, that's what i'd like to go with <clears throat> and of course you know if you're using fire you, you should make sure that you have uh some lighting effect on your character artwork or the surroundings as well like um here in this artwork you can see that um, I had the yellow rim light here, all over the edges and everywhere, so, so yeah, this is how I do fire. Oh, and of course, uh, what I like to do is um, do the core, so whenever she's like holding a uh, flame in her hand or anything, uh, do the core very, very, very bright, like, like, a, like a burning white. And usually I do that uh, with the fingers as well, like, you know, she's holding the flame so close that um, her fingers are usually just colored like a bright burning yellow or white or... Or, uh, yeah, well, you, you can see it. <laughs> Hopefully you can see it better than I can express myself, so... <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, this is my fire trick. And now I'm gonna save and I'm gonna read the comments. <laughs> uh, Little Mango, I know the pain of being short. Five feet two, lol, hard to reach things. I know, <laughs> and you're two inches taller than I am, so imagine. <laughs> um, try to epic. What do you do when you have an artist block? Um, I actually do have a video on this um, where I have like 10 tips on how to get over artist block so i recommend that um because in that video i go over various reasons you can have an artist block and various solutions because even for me it, it depends um how to get over it and of course you know there's there's a difference between an artist block and being burnt out um if you're interested more on the burnt out fact or the face um, I also would recommend uh, checking out one of Saturday AM's podcast where we were talking about being burnt out and many of our creators actually were talking about their experiences with that and how to overcome it. So, so I, I would recommend that because, yeah, um, those will give you more information than me rambling here right now. So, so, uh, so yeah, uh, I recommend checking out those. <clears throat> Aaron Johnson, I love your drawings. Thank you very much. Cat Boha, sunny draw fire. Equals magic happens. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was magical, but it's just such a cheap trick. Like, it's still just a few tools. It's, it's so easy to do it digitally. Uh, Little Mango, how do you blend shadows for skin in Clip Studio Paint? Trying to learn to make skin look smoother, to learn... Uh, more size shaded look. Um, well, 
I like to use um where is it all paintings or something and also watercolor like um uh, Many times the transparent watercolor is what I use to smoothen uh, coloring and uh, blend things and shadow as well. So for me that worked out really well. Uh, it also does have like a blend tool, but honestly I don't really like to use it because it's, it's just blending so much that it doesn't feel natural anymore. So I would recommend to be careful with that. Um, so yeah, most of the times I, I just go with um, the watercolor and the oil paint brushes. Of course, the oil paint brushes will give you like more of a texture, the more uh, solid edges. Uh, for example, if I go here, uh, I used these oil painting uh, brushes here. As you can see, it's still blended somewhat, but at the same time, you still can see the texture. You can still see the edges. So it's not just a like a, a super smooth blend um, but for uh, her face I mostly use the, the watercolor uh, brushes of course I did give a little bit of a texture for example I went in here with the purple and for that I used uh, the oil painting brushes I think this one this uh, flat oil which is uh, it's a custom brush I, I downloaded it from the clip studio so I use that So, so yeah, I, I, I like to use this too. But you can experiment with other tools as well because it has a bunch of tools and so many custom tools as well. Just for me, I, I prefer to use this too when it comes to coloring. Let me go. Oh wait, soft airbrush. Sorry, I forgot. But I'd like to learn some more tricks and tips too. Yeah, I usually don't use the soft airbrush to be honest. Uh, I, I don't use this, the airbrush that much. Like what I use from the airbrush is the droplet tool. I use it a lot. But the rest, these I usually don't even touch. Like sometimes I use the soft whenever I want like a like a soft shade of uh, lighting or just soft shade for something uh, for example i use the soft to to give a little bit of a gradient to amy's hair i'm not sure how much you can see it but her hair has a little bit of pink uh, can't talk pink gradient around the uh, end of her strands so for that i usually use uh, a soft airbrush but for blending i never use it to be honest I know many artists are using it, but uh, I, I just never liked it because it's just it's just too smooth and soft, and it doesn't really feel natural. <clears throat> uh, Savage Beer Arts. Uh, I remember back in high school, I drew fire for one of my characters, I believe. The art teacher I had was not very helpful with helping my improvement, only gave lackluster feedback. Um. Yeah, our teachers are not always helpful and supportive, that's for sure. You know, sometimes you can get lucky with them, and sometimes they just don't want to help you. Uh, of course, it's not just for the art teachers. Like, uh, I think I told this story many times before, probably during streams or maybe even a video. Uh, but I actually had... Um, uh, my literature teacher in elementary school and you know we had to for one of uh, our Hungarian classes we had to write a story like that that was the assignment like instead of an essay we had to write like a storybook story um, so I did and I did end up being like a 10 pages story and she immediately gave me an F saying that that's too long. You're not a writer. No one is interested in reading your story. I'm not gonna read it, so you're getting an F. And that messed me up so hard. <laughs> like, I swear to God, part of me wanting to write my stories even more and working harder is just pure vengeance for that lady. <laughs> like, 
I was so pleased that my passion was writing stories even back then. This was fifth grade, by the way. And I just couldn't believe her. Like she, she never even read it. That she just had so much prejudice. I'm not a writer. I suck. And she, she's just not reading it. And oh my goodness. Uh, um, you know, it's it's kind of funny because. There were so many times when I was feeling down and I was just like, I'm not sure if I can do this, I might not be good enough for comics or I, I might not be good to, to write the stories. And and then I just remember this date and I'm like, well, you know what? <laughs> F you, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> so, so yeah, teachers, sometimes they are just the worst. And you know, some other teachers are just wonderful and very supportive and they can help you on so many levels. So, so yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess I should be starting again. Same <laughs> time. I probably won't be finishing this today. I don't like this one. I'm not sure. Yeah, I probably need to do some more refining here and there. Uh, little mango. That's awful feedback to get from a teacher of all things. Yep. <laughs> Let's see. Well, you know, some teachers are just teachers in title, but not teachers at heart. Like some other them are just there for the paycheck, but they don't give a damn about the kids and how they raise them. They should be a very important part of raising kids and their mentality about things. So, so yeah, there's that. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna do a little bit of an inking, maybe ink her face or something. And then I might end the stream because it's starting to get late. Throat is really bugging me. <coughs> Excuse me. Going back to the teacher, I actually really want to go back to my elementary school. I I'm not even sure if she's still there or not, so I will have to do some research. But once I will have volume 3 of Saigami out, I'm just gonna go to her and I'm just gonna give her the books. Like, screw you, lady. <laughs> I know I could already do it because I already have two books, but you know, having three books is, is somehow different. Like. Like, three is already a number, like, you know, everyone can have a first book, that doesn't say a thing. It's, you know, it's just the first, that's, that's easy to get out. The second is, you know, it's, I'm sure, you, you, you had your second, but, but three is the right number that I feel like is justified enough, that I'm like, well, you probably don't even remember me, lady, but I made it. <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> I'm super excited. To have William Tree of Zygami out <laughs> on so many levels. Of course, first I need to finish it. Um, I'm on my way for that. Like, yeah, currently I'm on chapter 18. So a few more chapters and my vengeance <laughs> will reach its goal. <laughs> But yeah, I just I just want to prove her wrong. And you know, maybe you know, I'm not saying that I, I can change her or anything, but like I said, she probably doesn't even remember me or anything. But but you know, I, I would hope that maybe telling her the story that she probably doesn't even remember, maybe it can I'm not saying it can enlighten her, but you know, if it can just change her a little bit, like, you know, maybe she's like, Oh, maybe I should have been kinder to the kids I'm teaching. And maybe, you know, maybe she could be a little bit more supportive with the future generations of kids she will be teaching. 
that would be nice. Because, yeah, birds can be very cruel, so... It would be nice <laughs> to just change her mind a little bit. And of course, proving her wrong too, yeah. <laughs> Savage Beards. Yeah, the teacher is wow, it's great you're proving her wrong. I'm glad I have people in my life like you helping me get better. That's well, my pleasure. <laughs> and yeah, you know, it's I, I would say that I'm I'm lucky because there are so many people who are who are more sensitive and um, you know, if they don't receive encouragement or or on the contrary, they receive like harsh words like that or bad advice. They they just give up, and and that's the saddest thing because there are so many people who just give up because of the lack of encouragement. I I th I, I consider myself lucky because I always was the person who was just like, oh, you saying that I can't do it. I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna do it because you said I can't. Um. And for me, that that was always fueling my motivation. Uh, but I know that there are so many people who are not like that, and and it's always sad to see people like that just just give up. And for me, giving up is, is one of the saddest things ever happening. So so yeah, I'm coming for you, lady. <laughs> Movie and animation, that would be awesome, just prove her her completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna live stream her reaction. <laughs> but first I need to work harder to finish that book, so wish me luck. <laughs> Little Mango, while I full of art classes, I feel like the teacher I show if I like the teacher I show them personal arts and they have been super supportive of me in the type of art I do thankfully most of the time at least that's great that's that's awesome and, and you know that's how it is supposed to be like teachers should be supportive and you know I understand that sometimes they are not appreciating uh, certain styles like you know comics are usually the black sheep of art and there are many 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 art teachers who are not liking that but you know they they still should have an open mind like <clears throat> uh, my art teacher in high school uh, bless her heart she passed away a few years ago um, she was this old lady like she was already in retirement uh, when I got to high school um, but you know she she was she she had a beautiful open mind uh, like, you know, I, I had a conversation with her because I literally was the only artsy kid in, in my high school class. Uh, it, it was a police foundation school, so it was no wonder no one was into art. It was only me. And she was super happy to have at least one artsy kid in the class. Uh, so I had some extra classes with her and, you know, I always told her that I, I really want to do comics. Uh, you know, I, I'm in for art for that. And she was like, well, yeah, I, I, I understand that. I, I don't like comics. To her, that was a form of art that she she did not appreciate or did not understand that much because she was into the classic art. Um, but at the same time, she was she was supportive. Like she was like, "Well, yeah, if that's what you want to do, then you should aim for that. I I can maybe teach you some stuff uh, about uh, like classical art or you know art basics that might be helpful with that." And she actually did even some research. Like, you know, she was saying to me that, you know, I looked up this article on this art style um, that you're so much into. So so that that was like super cute of her. And, and yeah, you know, she never let me draw anime or manga during class, uh, to be honest, because she was like, well, you're, you're going to draw that anyway, whether you're here in class or not. Uh, so she made me draw rocks and rocks, lots of rocks. <laughs> uh, 
but still, you know, that that was that was useful. Like <laughs> you see my art, I draw a lot of rocks, so so that was <laughs> her imprint on my art. But but yeah, you know, she she had an open mind, and and I always was like, damn, every teacher should be like that lady. <laughs> Hello, hello. Uh, Mugen animations, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, she was she was an awesome lady. <laughs> and, and you know, I was lucky to have her in high school. Of course, I only had art classes for um for two years in high school, but still it was fun. <laughs> I learned how to draw rocks. <laughs> Ayan Ahmed, how did you make this idea for the story? Um well, <laughs> I had a lot of inspiration um, for Saigami. Um, I actually was writing a novel um, that was the basic of the story, like a, like a fantasy novel. And I was only writing novels before I started doing comics. Um, that was the gist of the characters. Um, and then in 2005, I started working on Saigami. Back then it was highly, highly, highly inspired uh, by Final Fantasy X. And of course some other shows, anime movies I was watching, like Naruto had a lot to do with it, of course. <laughs> because Naruto was a huge inspiration for me, mostly art-wise, but at the same time you might still see some similarities. Uh, with that, um, but yeah, you know, um, I always try to to get inspiration from real life as well. So many of the characters and some events, some happenings in the story are inspired by real life. Of course, not as they happened, but for example, the whole military system in Saigami uh, is highly inspired by my background. Um, I, I grew up with war stories uh, because my grandma, uh, my grandpa, uh, fought in World War II. You know, he was um, he was a war prisoner, and, and um, we, we in Hungary had some huge uh, like revolution, freedom fight, and all that stuff. And I grew up with those stories, so I, I I always wanted to put something from that into the story. So. As well, the whole military system and, and some things that you will see later on in the story will come from, um, as well as you know, the the main point of the story, you know, finding your place in the world is. I I think that's something that is relatable for everyone, and and of course that comes from from real life experience as well. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I try to seek inspiration in in everything, um, stories, games. <laughs> books, comics, you name it. Music, music is highly inspirational for me. So, so yeah, many many things inspired Saigami, and as it shaped along the way, you know, I, I was also doing some more research on, on many things. Uh, I, I studied different things uh, during my college years, um, you know, psychology, soci sociology, and, and all sorts of stuff that helps me portray the characters better, the events and everything. So, so, so yeah, it's, it's a big mash of everything. <laughs> and of course, you know, there are certain aspects of the story that I was like, I just want to do it my way. Like, uh, the reason why Amy has firepowers, because when you look at anime and manga, it was always, 
the main character, the guy who's having the firepower, and you know, the girl was always just there for fun service, maybe the girl character was just a healer or, you know, had the lesser powers. So I was like, you know what, in this story, I'm gonna have a female lad and she's gonna have the fire powers. And, and you know, that was the gist of the idea that the 15 years old me came up with. <laughs> and you know, it, 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 it's, it was a concept that I was not putting that much thought into. Like, you know, there, there was no symbolism in, in that or anything. I just wanted this time the girl have the main spot and, and the coolest power because, you know, fire tends to be the coolest and, and all this stuff. But at the same time, you know, I realized that I can use that well uh, from, a, from a writer's point because, you know, at the same time, fire is very destructive and, uh, you know, I, I never wanted Daimi to master the element right off the bat and, and you know, I, I always wanted to go for something a bit more complicated than just black and white. Um, so you, you will see a lot of that in the story later on. And not just with the elements and the powers, but uh, the whole morale of the story and, and, and different things. Uh, of course, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but... But yeah, there will be some interesting stuff coming on. Um, let's see, Mugen Animations, this might be a big question, but how did you go about building the world of Saigami? Well, <laughs> following the previous question, um, it's basically the same. I uh, took inspiration from many, many things that inspired me. Wow, that was such a deep sentence. Took inspiration from the things that inspired me. Gotta trademark that. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, like I already mentioned, Final Fantasy X surely, surely was a huge inspiration uh, for the world of Saigami. But at the same time, I took a lot of inspiration from real life, once again. For example, the locations you see in Saigami are inspired by real locations. Like uh, Zeos, uh, the town they're in right now, is purely inspired by my hometown page in Hungary. Like... Um, you could literally do like an Easter egg hunt. Uh, Easter egg hunt. I really can't English today. <laughs> in page because uh, many of the buildings and locations that I drew in the chapters of Saigami are actual real locations and real buildings and stuff like that. So, so yeah, uh, small elements of the world are, are inspired by by real locations, real events. Um, at the same time, you know, I, I try to mix. Um, <coughs> sorry, um, real life elements with uh, fantasy elements as well. So, you know, whenever it comes to the wildlife or uh, the plantation of the world, I, I try to go a little bit by imagination. Of course, you know, I, I did a bunch of research um, of various like greenery, trees, animals, and stuff like that, but I, I try to mix them in a way that I I can make them my own and, and create a world that is Astrian, it's purely for Saigami and, and you know, I'm not saying it, it doesn't look like anything else because I did not go that crazy with the world building because, you know, I could have gone like super crazy with everything but at the same time I, I didn't want to, to feel like a completely new planet or anything like, you know, like what they have in Avatar, that's super cool, I love that but, you know, I, I wanted to have something that still kind of has the feel that it, it, it's it's familiar enough but at the same time it's it's fantasy -ish enough and it's new enough so as you go with the story you will see some some locations that are more on the fantasy side and more of on the nothing like you see in our world like if you if you're a subscriber to Saturday AM issue 109 you've seen that background or in my previous live stream <laughs> <laughs> you see in that background. Now, that is something you don't see in our world. So that was just pure, like, fantasy at its finest. Uh, but at the same time, that background, I felt like it was mostly inspired by Final Fantasy X, where they have, like, a complete ruined city. Um, like, the ruins of Zemarkan. So I took inspiration from that, because I, I really wanted to draw, like, a ruined city. 
Um, but the design was a mixture of a bunch of things. I, I, I did a research uh, for various reference images and all the stuff. Once again, that's something I actually did share on my Patreon. Um, my reference images that I, I was relying on by working on that. <coughs> so yeah, I, I like to take my inspiration from various places. And you know, usually I, I recommend to do that. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I think there's even that saying that, you know, uh, shoot, I don't know how it goes, but you know, it's like, if you take inspiration from one, it's stealing. Or copying but if you take inspiration from money it's original or something I, I don't know how it goes properly but I, I read a, like a quote somewhere it might have been a meme but still you know it, it was very true that you should study research and get inspired from many many places Ayan Ahmed, I'm interested in drawing and I have the idea, but when I try to draw the characters, I have in mind doesn't go with what I draw or sketch, which makes me think that I'm not really good. I'm not really a good author. And it mostly has to do with digital artwork, so what advice would you give? Um, so if I understand right, you, you just can't really draw the things you want to draw them when it comes to drawing them digitally. Well, that uh, surely can be because of digital. Like doing digital line arts is is very tricky. Like I could never master them on an on-display tablet. So maybe that can have something to do with that. So I would recommend that uh, you know if you have the means, just grab a piece of paper. See if you can just do that uh, traditionally. Um, and you know, just, just keep practicing. Like there are so many times when I just can't draw the things that I imagine them in my mind, but you know, I don't have the luxury to just give up or feel frustrated. You know, sometimes maybe you just need to change things around. Like, I'm not sure how long have you been following this stream, but if you go back to the beginning, this artwork that I'm drawing right now, Look completely different when I started out, and you know I didn't like it. It didn't really look what I had in mind, so I just kept going back and forth and changing it. So maybe that's something you could do as well. And you know, uh, don't feel frustrated if it doesn't work out at first. It usually doesn't. It takes years of practice to be able to draw things exactly how you have in your mind. Like many times, even today, after 16 years of drawing. I still struggle with drawing things the way I want them. And there are cases when I'm just like, yeah, I just can't draw it, like how I have it in my mind. So I have to improvise and I have to come up with something else. I know it can be frustrating, but you know, you, you have to be flexible when it comes to drawing because you're just, you're just getting frustrated and, and you're just stuck with one problem, then you won't make progress. So have an open mind, practice, have patience, and 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 just try to solve the problem. Uh, better Robin, you're one of my favorite mangaka. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Cat Boha, it's midnight. Useless information. Goodness. So we've been at this for two and a half hours. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably should be calling it a night soonish. <clears throat> I've been coughing a lot too, so it's probably not too pleasant to your ears. Ayan Ahmed, thank you for the advice. Yeah, absolutely, my, my pleasure. You know, I, I really like to give advice. Um Whenever I can, the best I can. <laughs> and I'm not saying you can only do things the way I do or anything, but um, I'm trying my best with this. Uh, 
Okay. So I did not make as much progress as I would have, but hey, at least I did the fire tutorial. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in my best shape right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'm gonna call this stream a night here. Uh, I think it's best for me if I go to bed and finish this tomorrow because I really don't feel good. Um, but yeah, I, I was super happy to do this live stream. Like, despite being sick and not being at my best, not with neither with R, neither with English, I hope you did enjoy. <laughs> this stream and I, I hope that you had fun and some of it was useful at least you know we had a fire tutorial <laughs> I'm gonna start giving this streams a name and this one's gonna be at least we had a fire tutorial <laughs> here as well um so so yeah I hope to do a stream soonish uh like I said I will have a video very soon about the the new XFIP and drawing tab and hopefully some more uh, depending on how much free time I will have. And yeah, um, once again, you can find all of the links in the description for Saturday AM, for my books, uh, Patreon, all other social media. So please check them out. Um, if you don't follow me on social media, I most of the times am active on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Facebook too, kinda, not really, it's just tied with my Instagram, but still. Instagram and Twitter are my go-to. Uh, and of course, there's Patreon where I post all of my running thoughts and <laughs> artworks <coughs> and everything else. So, so yeah, please please check everything out. And don't forget that you can read um, Issues of Saturday M for free, issue 107 with... No, 108. Yeah, 108. <laughs> 108 is out for free to read for you guys. Um, and if you like what you see, uh, please consider to subscribe. We, we have a new subscription model, but still, if you subscribe via my link or via any other creators link you want to support, the, the subscription fee will support those creators. So please consider that and please look forward to the next video, the next issue of Saturday AM, the next live stream, the next everything. Um, I'm going to do my best. First to get better and then to be back with some more art and videos and, and everything. So so yeah, uh, I, I see some comments here, but <laughs> uh, I'm gonna read these comments and then and I'm gonna go. <laughs> I can never end these streams properly, like <laughs> I need to come up with like a, a send off line or something. Uh, 79, hope you get better soon. Thank you. I, I will do my best <laughs> trying to get better. I sort of will take my medicine right now and go to bed. Uh, Savage Bureau, try to get some rest. It was fun talking with you. Best wishes for your health. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Ayan Ahmed, before you leave, what exactly is the software where you draw digital you're doing? Uh, it's Clip Studio Paint Pro. This is the pro version, so this is the cheaper version. Uh, if you can see here, Clip Studio Paint Pro. It's pretty neat, I can only recommend it. And sometimes they have good deals where you can get the software for like half price. So it's worth following them. And you know, they also have a free trial. So I, I can only recommend it. It's the perfect app or uh, drawing software for doing comics and illustrations as well. It's pretty neat. Um, Ricardo Duran, at least there was a fire tutorial. Lol, perfect. <laughs> It's the name of the stream, it's settled. <laughs> uh, better Robin, I love your manga trailers. Thank you, thank you. Um, they are super fun and uh, huge thanks uh, for Madness for providing the amazing Saigami music for it. Please check him out as well. You can find a link to his YouTube channel as well. And you know, you can, you can get the Saigami soundtrack. Uh, you can enjoy it for free on his YouTube channel. And you can also support him by getting the album. Um, Ricardo Drun, thank you for the same feel better. Have a good sleep, thank you. And likewise, I wish all of you guys a very nice evening, afternoon, morning, no matter where you are, what times you're running. And thank you very much for joining me for this stream today. And I see you soon in my next video. Take care and bye. <laughs>